Hi. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much, uh, Professor Tripani and also Professor Pierre. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my uh, paper. And it's more like a, a report rather than a paper. And um, I would like to share that um, I am here, of course, right now I'm in USA, in Arizona. Um, but this work has been done uh, since 2016. And um, I'm, just to give you a little bit brief introduction of myself, um, I was born in India and I got my degree in mechanical engineering. So I'm actually an engineer by profession, even though I spend a lot of time in, uh, in engineering as well as in uh, computer area working in uh, in various company in various vocation. And then I moved to uh, Canada to do my studies in McGill in Montreal. And the reason I'm mentioning this thing because I was very fortunate to live in a different cities in the world. Uh, I was born in Calcutta, then I moved to Montreal, which is a completely different city. Then I moved down to Phoenix area in Arizona. And then uh, in 2007, I went to Shanghai. And Shanghai has a 25 million people, and it's a completely different type of architecture and political scenario and everything. And today, the, the one that I'm talking about is that, um, uh, which is a uh, micro greenhouse uh, concept. That concept came uh, when I was living in Shanghai, and uh, and also uh, I came back to USA. Uh, in 2016, and that's where I started this project of uh, distributed residential agriculture system. So uh, it is quite, it is a little bit different than um, all the present, or uh, the previous uh, presenters. So I hope that uh, um, it will not probably break the thread, but rather you'll see that how um, the integration of the green urban will go from, uh, from the big community to big area, to county, to city, and even to in our domestic life. And that is our vision, okay? So without any further delay, I'm just going to go to my next slide, okay. Okay. Next drive, no? Yes. <clears throat> so um, I'll, stra I'll say a few words about the history uh, very briefly that actually the concept of the greenhouse of the glasses is really nothing new. It started almost uh, uh, in the Roman emperor time in 380. And the only thing that I would like to point out that it was at that time uh, we did it or, or people were trying to ha make the, the emperor happy. So they thought about how to grow the vegetable that he likes, which is cucumber like vegetable uh, throughout the whole year. And that was the motivation for doing the greenhouse or, or similar to greenhouse. Then move forward. Um, we also see in the, uh, that even in Korea, in Asia, uh, during the dynasty, the report uh, between 1392 and 1910, the report that was represented, that there was some uh, 15th century, the Korea in which a range of greenhouse types were used to provide shelter and grow, grow plants and raise vegetables, right, in, in, even in Korea. And moving forward, uh, uh, Italy, that this is, this is the country that I think most of us are talking today, uh, is very proud to have this, uh, where the first new glass houses were built during the 13th century. And these glass houses were called botanical garden. These original botanical gardens were used to grow exotic and medicinal plants. However, they are complex in structure and failed to supply with desire. So, um, and then uh, that was the kind of the, the seed of the germination of the idea. And the first commercial glass house was constructed by French botanist, Charles Lucien 
and that was the first, I think, the, the concept of commercial glasses is came into picture. And again, I don't want to spend too much in this, but I just wanted to share with you the, the, that it is uh, nothing new. So why I'm talking about it. So I'm going to go to fast forward and I would like to share some data and data that was published um, in uh, US uh, Census of Agriculture data uh, and also, uh, that, and I have given reference. Uh, the one of the chart in the, the left side, the first chart, it talks about um, the different kinds of vegetables and, and which is very simple and what is the value the monetary value of the sales figure. And it is just for the record. What are more important is the, uh, the right, the chart, the second chart, where it talks about, uh, it shows from, from, two, uh, from 1998 to 2014, how the number of operations, and these operations are in micro, uh, not micro greenhouse, commercial greenhouse operation has grown uh, from 1,015 to 2,521 during the time, and also the, how the sales figure has jumped from $223 million to 797. So the, the question is, the, what, what's the important about it? What's important about it is the following. If you look at the, the growth rate of the number of operations, and I, I, I've, I've written that, that I, it, it, it is almost like a, 148 percent during those nine years this year and that comes and annualized uh, is 9.25 percent right but for the same period if you look at the annualized average growth rate in cells it is almost 16 percent almost the double right so the I, and again you know i i'm i am also uh, an economist even the uh, uh, economist i, I I did not go to economics degree, but I did study and I practice in different ways. So it is very interesting. What is happening is that the sales numbers are changing much faster than the number of operation. It can happen in a couple of key situation or scenario. One thing could be that either the, the, the price, unit price has gone up, but I don't think the unit price has gone up for vegetable that much during that time. That it, that is, it is changed slightly. The other possibility is that the size of the operation, that means the square feet or the square meter, right, has gone up. So what is happening is the more larger and larger of commercial greenhouses are being built. And there's a good reason for that. It's a very scale. If you increase the, then you can make more production per area and that way probably. But this kind of centralization has an effect on the, and what it boils down is the actually, that means you have to transfer the food that you grow in California, say for example, and then you have to transfer it to, to New York or some other parts of the country. So in the following chart, I'm going to show you how the cost of the transportation of the food has changed. So in 2009, it was around $5,000 per truck, right? And, but in 2014, it is almost $7,000. So what happened is that, and this is part truck. So if, you, if, if the cost, unit cost has gone up right, at the same time, unit cost has gone up as well as the same time, the volume have, of the, has grown up because of course that more and more people are uh, growing, population growing. And also, as I told you in the previous slide, the centralization, right? So because of these two effects, what is happening is that, that we are spending more money in transporting the food than the, the cost of the food itself. So in certain part, time of the year, you'll see that if you, if you transfer a food from California to New York and the people are paying at the grocery shop, they'll pay the total price of the cost of a tomato or any vegetable will be higher. Not it will be, the, you, the cost of transportation is higher than the actual the original cost, right? So this is not sustainable in our analysis, right? So we've been thinking about what we can do about it. And one of the ideas that we thought about is the how we could create distributed agriculture system. And what it distributed is that our vision is that we are going to bring the, the cost, the production of the production means the gro gro where you're growing and the point of 
consumption, which is as close as possible, right? So I'm just going to very, very briefly mention that in 2016, uh, we started, and again, it started, to be honest, in my backyard. I, I live in Arizona. I'm fortunate to have it. And we, we designed a, a wooden structure, which has got around 20 in this structure. And then we, we, we changed the design. We did not use any uh, polythene plastic that we use generally. We are using a uh, very th fine net. And we'll talk about if the time permits. And I can also refer you to the, some literature that has been published. Okay. And the good thing is that it is very strong very strong in the sense that it is still there, you know, from 2016 and to this 2020, and there is not any significant erosion, okay? So, and, and now I'm going to show you um, the, what we are growing, okay? Again, th th these are not uh, anything, because the vegetables and the fruits, uh, we are not claiming that they are, they are any different if they are grown uh, in a micro greenhouse. What we are saying is that if you really look at the, the carbon footprint of these vegetables, then these, these vegetables and these flowers and these fruits, which are grown in the micro greenhouse in the backyard has lower carbon footprint than probably something that you can buy if you buy from the superstore, okay? That is our point. Now, I, I'm now going to, uh, in the following slide, I'm talking about, I'm sorry? Hey, you have only two minutes. Okay. Uh, Okay, all right, I'm just going to jump and I'm just going to share some of the ideas, um, ideas with the drawing, uh, which is also available. And, uh, and then this is the, the patent. And what we talk about is that uh, uh, in, addition to the, uh, in addition to the design of the structural design, there are also some innovation in the thermal design, thermal efficiency. So what we are talking, what we're doing is basically we are using the the energy in the sun from the, or, or any kind of renewable energy, and we store it in a phase change material, we, like a, in, inside. And we are, these are the, um, the storage uh, unit inside. And then in, in a situation like that, and in the nighttime, we release the heat. And so that way we do not need any, um, any, uh, any non-renewable, like any fossil fuel or electrical system, okay? Uh, <clears throat> And I just want to share uh, that this is the design of this uh, greenhouse in 2020. And um, again, it's a basic fundamental design is quite different than probably the, the, uh, the generally the greenhouse that you see or think of. Uh, th these are 10 by 10. And again, it can be uh, integrated to your building, um, you know, much more efficiently. Um, and, now, this is the slide where I'm going to talk, I showed um, the comparison of the, the, the vegetables that we go in the micro greenhouse. Uh, and one of the things that I wanted to just to point out is that uh, in the market, if you look at the vegetable, their prices will fluctuate from day to day and definitely from month to month. And they fluctuate because those are variation due to the uh, environment, as a well cost, as I mentioned to you, okay? But if you have a, a system, the way that we are, we are doing greenhouses, risk, then the price is stable throughout the whole year. In fact, for a longer time period. And another matrix that I would like to point out is the zero distance between the consumption and the production in our method. And that way, the, it's a very low carbon footprint. In addition to that, it's a very high food safety and so forth, right? Uh, and in this slide, I just wanted to emphasize that uh, what we are trying to accomplish, what we're trying to accomplish is our value proposition that we have is that we, we provide the high quality vegetables, as we mentioned to you, because it, it is controlled and it is organic and pure. And also we are, it is sustainable greenhouse, as I mentioned to you, that because of the way we designed it and the, the patented technology, it gives us a sustainable greenhouse. And the most important thing is the lifestyle. And our idea is that uh, we, we are not going to do it, it outside. We are going to bring this thing inside in the backyard and the frontier so the whole family can participate, okay? And that's the reason that we're talking about a, a social farming concept that we redefined actually last year in Denmark when I was in a, 
program, an accelerator program. I was very fortunate to go there and, and to participate. And the most important thing is also economically wise that we are going to offer the greenhouse as a service model where the people, the owner, they don't have to pay anything in the front. They're going to lease it almost like a, um, the way you uh, uh, rent your house. You know, you pay per month and, and you can still own the benefit or enjoy the benefit, okay? And I, again, I thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to talk to a very diverse group of people today. And it was a, um, I'm appreciative of that. And if there's any question, you have my email address.